What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you a review of the Action Bronson New Balance 1906R in the Scorpius colorway. So this is the final of the three 1906R colorways between Action Bronson and New Balance. Following the Rosewater and the Medusa Azul colorways, which I've already reviewed on my channel before. So this one was the most limited of the three, and it's nicknamed the Scorpius colorway, and these were only available in limited numbers on Action Bronson's website, whereas the other two colorways had a wider release following their initial release on Action Bronson's website back in June. This one though didn't have a follow-up release, which explains why the secondary market prices on this pair are extremely high, easily over a thousand Canadian dollars for most sizes. And I don't want to get into the ethics of the release, but basically for most people, if you wanted to purchase this shoe, first of all you had to get extremely lucky or have some sort of purchase history on Action Bronson's website, but you also had to commit to buying the sweater that I'm wearing, which was pretty expensive for a sweatshirt. Personally, because I really wanted this pair, I really didn't mind, but for some people that don't care for the apparel, that might be a deal breaker if you don't really consider the resale prices. So these retailed for a price of 185 US dollars or 260 Canadian converted. And the style code for this shoe is M1906RBR. And just like the other two pairs, this comes in the same red colored cardboard box with baklava banding on the top lid done in this shiny iridescent finish. And has an orange colored dust bag with baklava and New Balance co-branding along with the tagline specializing in life on the bottom. So as far as the shoe goes, diving right into the details, on the toe box you can see this is crafted using this very unique looking knit. So the knit here is done in a way where it looks like it has these elongated indentations. And right above this holding the laces in place, we have this orange colored suede with a reflective New Balance and logo pressed into the middle. Overlaid on both sides of the toe box, we have this asymmetrical overlay of reflective 3M, which is done in a mix of this olive green and silver. And then surrounding the front toe cap, we have another overlay of orange colored suede. And then on the sides of the shoe, where this triangular cutout is, we have a very interesting overlay here, which almost feels like a mix of a synthetic leather and mesh. So you can see we have these holes found throughout, and has a bit of a waxy feel to it to the touch. Moving downwards towards the eyelets, so we have these woven loop eyelets in the middle, with a shiny grey detailing running down the middle. And then these two loop through the New Balance N logo underneath, which is what New Balance calls their N lock technology, which extends all the way to the base of the sneaker. So you can imagine when you tighten up the shoe, you're pulling these straps upwards and inwards, giving you more containment and support around your midfoot. And then underneath the New Balance N logo, we have more of that texturized mesh-like material, along with more of that yellow colored knit on the bottom. Further down next to this, we have more of these reflective overlays in this olive green tone, and we have 1906R branding found on the lateral side only. And then covering the heel of the sneaker, we have this TPU heel cup which is done in this neon green matte finish. We have NB branding in the middle, and then on the top of the heel, we have these three strips of reflective silver 3M. Hanging off the shoe just like the other two colorways, we have a rubberized hang tag with Baklava New Balance co-branding. And then as far as the laces go, so this pair just like the other two colorways, they only come with one lace option, and they're a thin rope style lace done in a mix of light blue and purple. Underneath this, the tongue is decently padded, and it's covered in this open style dark grey colored mesh. And then fused onto the top, we have this tag with New Balance Baklava co-branding. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in an orange colored mesh. And then for the insoles, these are your typical foam line insole. It's lined in this black nylon on top and we have Baklava New Balance branding pressed onto the heel. So the upper of this shoe sits atop this Absorb and Absorb SBS foam midsole. So the midsole is painted in two tones of grey, but we have this peach colored splash found towards the middle. And then on the heel, you can see New Balance's energy technology, which is done in the form of these gel-like pillars, which help with impact protection and shock absorption. And then for the outsole, this is your typical 1906R outsole. However, this is crafted using a mix of different types of rubber. So on the forefoot, we have black rubber and a smoky, semi-translucent gray colored rubber as well. Whereas on the heel, this is done in more of a semi-translucent, icy blue colored rubber instead. And then in the middle, underneath the outsole, we have a light brown colored TPU shank plate, which is what New Balance calls their stability web technology, and this helps with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. 
And for those wondering about how these fit, to me, these fit me pretty true to size. So in my case, I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I got these in my typical 1906R size, which is a size 10, and they fit me really nicely in a slightly snug way. I feel like they run a little bit more snug than a typical 1906R, so if you're someone that's kind of in between sizes and you like more of a roomy fit, then I would go up to the bigger size. But in general, if you have a narrow, normal, or even a slightly wide foot, you can go true to size for this shoe, but if you have a wider foot, you'd probably be better off going up a half size. To give you guys a point of comparison, I also wear a size 10 in other New Balance silhouettes like the 860 V2, 2002R, and a lot of the made in UK models like the 991 and the 1500. Whereas I go a half size down to a 9.5 in a lot of the made in USA models like the 992, 993, and most of the models in the 990 series. Next up in terms of the comfort, so the 1906R in my opinion is a very comfortable sneaker. Is it as comfortable as, for example, a 993 or a 990 V6 or a 991 V2? I would say it's close, but maybe not as comfortable. It's a decently balanced shoe, so I mean, it's going to give you some level of plushness and a lot of stability, but it's a little bit more on the firmer side. But it's still going to be an extremely comfortable shoe for everyday use or if you're going to be walking around for long distances. Last but not least, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship. So first off, the material quality I thought was solid. They do utilize genuine suede on this shoe, and just like the other two pairs, there's a lot of variety in terms of the materials used to craft the upper. So one thing I've noticed is that all three pairs utilize different materials, and I feel like the materials on this pair feel a little bit more elevated than the other two. And in terms of the build and the craftsmanship, for the most part it was solid. I had some minor issues with some dried glue along the suede panels and for example around the midsole area, but nothing that was a real deal breaker. Overall, it was relatively well put together, so I really have no complaints about my pair at all. So with all of that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you, and I'll show you guys how these look. I know this is probably the most controversial colorway of the three just because it's the most inaccessible and the fact that they're reselling for so high inevitably has a lot of people pretty salty but I'm going to try to talk about the shoe strictly objectively. So I think the colorway of the shoe is really really nice. It's a very unique colorway and one that for sure isn't going to be the easiest shoe to wear and to pull off but the colors are really bold and they're definitely going to turn a lot of heads. I think the mix of the yellows, the olive greens, and the oranges, while it's kind of a random combination, to me it really works in a zany and crazy sort of harmony. So when I have to rank the three colorways, I have the Rosewater number one, this one at number two, and the Medusa Azul at number three. But all three colorways, like I said earlier, I love how they utilize different materials on the upper, which gives each pair a unique flavor and a unique feel. So it's not like they utilize the same materials across the board and just swap the colors. Each pair really had more of a unique flavor to them, which I personally really appreciated. So at the end of the year, if I'm doing like a top 20 New Balance list, it makes it feel more justified if I have all three on my list because technically all three are pretty unique and stand out amongst each other. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about this Scorpius colorway of the Action Bronson New Balance 1906R? For anyone watching, were you lucky enough to grab these on the release date for retail? Did you strike out and pay the heavy resale price for this shoe? Or were you not feeling the colorway at all and this was a pass for you? As usual though, if you guys enjoy this review, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on x at sean.go spelled out, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. Appreciate your continued love and support and I'll catch all of you in my next video.